Hello, and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso, and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all my students, and shout out to everyone watching this video. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm doing great. It's winter in Chicago, but today it was about 40 degrees, so that means you'll find people in shorts and driving with their windows down in their cars, so it starts to feel like spring here in Chicago. All right, today's video is looking at adding people to your renderings in Photoshop. This is a video that's been a long time coming. I've been adding people to renderings for many, many years. I used to have my own rendering company. And I'm going to share with you the technique that we used to use to add people to our renderings. All right, before we jump into the tutorial, if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. Click on subscribe, click on the bells, and click on all the notifications there is something for everyone here alright getting pretty close to 8,000 subscribers thanks for making that happen also connect with me on Instagram see what my students are up to I've been posting a lot of really good student work um, students at IIT and Columbia College you can follow me at my first name Alfonso underscore my last name Peluso all right, today, so we're talking about adding people to renderings. This is Pixel Flakes. They're a professional rendering company, and I really like this image here. And the people are a really important part of this image. And it's really important that you find people that are dressed appropriately for the scene for instance this is a winter scene these people are wearing winter jackets and hats and things like that they are shown being active they're they're doing something that makes the rendering interesting so keep that in mind you're trying to tell a story with the rendering and one way to tell the story is not only through the architecture but also through the people that you put in the images all right, we're going to use a site called Non Scandinavia. I think it's just a funny name. There's a lot of sites out there where you can find people that are already cut out. So, what I like to use from nonscandinavia.com is I like to use originals. I'm not a big fan of silhouette people. That's a start using silhouette people, but as the renderings become more professional and you want to tell that story through the renderings you need to use full color people real people so I'm going to originals and I'm clicking on I understand take me to the images alright I am gonna use this fella because I think it's awesome that he's wearing purple shoes red pants and a green shirt and it looks like he has a bow tie <laughs> not not at his collar but on his pocket so <laughs> we're gonna use him so I'm gonna right click and save image as alright I'm gonna put this in a folder where I can actually find it alright I'm just gonna rename it okay so I have the person I want now one of the issues with a lot of renderings I see is people are not the right scale so it's very important that your people are the correct scale and one way to do that and however you're rendering whatever you're rendering in SketchUp 3ds Max Rhino whatever it may be you wanna add a cylinder that is the height of a person so I use the height of an average person so I just type in the command cylinder and I'll place the cylinder in the scene and I'm gonna make mine a diameter I'm making sure that's a diameter of 
one foot six and I'm making it the height of five foot ten so whatever software you're in you can make a cylinder with a diameter of one foot six and a height of five foot ten and that will give you a placeholder in Photoshop to scale your person to you don't need one for every person. I recommend a cylinder in the foreground, in the midground, and in the background. So it just gives you a gauge for putting your people into Photoshop. Okay, and the way that I do this is I render out my scene. So this is just a simple scene. It has a sky, it has a ground plane, and it has a box. Just to give me a guide for the shadows and the reflections and we'll see that in Photoshop so I'm gonna go ahead and render this out take a couple seconds and I'll go ahead and save it I'm just gonna save it as a JPEG so that I see the background I'm going to call this scene. Okay, now I'm going to show my cylinder and I'm going to select my cylinder and invert and hide. So I'm only rendering the cylinder. So if you have multiple cylinders, you're only rendering those cylinders out. You're not waiting for an entire scene to render. It's just the cylinders. So I'll go ahead and render that. and I'll save it as a JPEG again and I'll call it cylinder okay in Photoshop so I'm gonna get rid of this one and I'm gonna open up my scene okay there's my scene and I'm going to put my cylinder in there. This is just a temporary layer. So I'll open my cylinder and I'll just use Control A to select all. Control A to select all or Command A, depending on if you're a Mac on your Mac or PC. So Control or Command A, then Control or Command C for copy. And then I'll go over to my scene and Control or Command V to paste. And I'm just gonna take the opacity down on this layer Okay, so that's just a placeholder. I won't need it for very long. Okay, now I'll open up my person. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I can drag and drop it. Some people like dragging and drop it. I'm big on the control A, control C, and over to my scene, control V. Okay, so he's a little small. So I have my cylinder and I can place him over my cylinder. I'm going to keep my layers really organized by naming them. So I'm just double clicking. I'm going to call him man. And I'm going to scale him with control T or command T. Just picking a corner to keep him keep him proportional. Okay, and I'll zoom in. Okay, so one of the things that's important here is the lighting so if I turn the man layer off the lighting is coming from the right side and the man is actually lit from the left side so I'll go ahead and turn off the cylinder layer I don't need that right now so I'm gonna actually change the way he's lit and I'm gonna do that with the dodge and burn tool so I'm gonna dodge which means make darker I'm gonna dodge the left side uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to burn the left side. So burn is make, makes it darker. So I'm going to burn the left side, and I'm going to dodge the right side. So let's go ahead and burn. Now, you have to experiment with the size. So I'm just putting my cursor over the canvas, and I can see the size of that brush. You know, it can be really big, or it can be... Uh, something right about this size and I'll just click on that arrow to get rid of rid of it now there's three ranges for burning and dodging 
there's shadows, midtones, and highlights, and I'm going to burn all three of them. There's also the exposure, like how how much burn, how much dodge. Okay, so I'm going to go in, and you'll see he starts getting darker on this left side, and that's just affecting the highlights, so the brighter areas. Then I'll get the midtones, and then I'll get the high. Uh, I'll get, I didn't, did I do shadows? I don't even know. No, I didn't do shadows because I can see it's affecting it. Okay, so you see that happening there. So if I go to my history, here is the difference. So from there, he was bright on the left, and now he's dark on the left. And I also like that this gives the people an artistic look to them. You know, they, they look a little bit like they were painted. So I'm going to choose Dodge now. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with shadows. So this is making it brighter. And I'm going to go to midtones. And I'm going to go to highlights. Highlights. So he's really getting blasted by the sun, which I really like. And I, I like this uh, kind of half in shadow, half in daylight. And if I go to my history, I can see the difference now. You've seen <clears throat> the light flipping to the other side. All right, that's perfect. All right, I will save. You never know when something's going to happen, right? Okay, so the next thing that we need, if I zoom out a little bit, is we need a reflection because this box, this proxy object, this placeholder object, that object has a reflection and a shadow. So our person needs a reflection and a shadow. So I'll go over here to man and I'm going to use control J or command J depending on what computer system you're on. That makes a copy and this is going to be man reflection and I'm going to place that layer underneath the man okay so man reflection so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use control T or command T and I'm gonna right click over the man and I'm gonna choose flip vertical okay and I can press enter to get out of that and I'm just gonna use I'm holding down my shift key and I'm using the move tool and I'm just dragging him down lining him up shoes to shoes I'm just gonna use my arrow key to up you know just bump it up move them up with the arrow key the up arrow okay I'm also going to make this a little bit transparent so I'm going to take the opacity down I don't know how far I'll take it down I'm looking at the reflectivity here now he has some bold colors so he stands out the reflection stands out a lot more I'm gonna add some blur to this and the type of blur that I'm gonna add is a Gaussian blur so I'm gonna make sure that layer is current and go to filter blur Gaussian blur now if I want to see a preview here I can zoom out with the minus and I can zoom back in with the plus I can pan okay but I can see it just just as well in the canvas so the smaller the radius the less blur the larger the radius the more blur At some point it disappears so something about there looks good okay that's that's my reflection now the shadow is a little bit more involved so I'm gonna control J or command J on this layer and I'm gonna call this man shadow okay I won't move it under the man just yet in the layers I am going to select just the man and when I hover over when I put my cursor over the thumbnail this is called the thumbnail in Photoshop when I put my cursor over the thumbnail it changes to the hand with the pointer finger and if I click on it it doesn't do anything but if I use my if I use my control key I can make a selection of that of that person Okay, a, a friend of mine who was a graphic designer showed me that one one day a long time ago, and I'm forever grateful for that. So I use Control and click on the thumbnail.
OK. Now I'm going to fill that with black. So I'm going to go to Main Menu, Edit, Fill. And under Contents, it probably isn't set to black by default, but I'm going to choose black. OK. I'm going to use my shortcut Control D or Command D to deselect. I'm going to use Control T or Command T. And I'm going to right click over the person and I'm going to choose distort. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little crime scene here. I'm going to grab that middle node and I'm going to drag it down. Okay, so that's my crime scene drawing. <laughs> and I'm going to also spread out the nodes at the top and give it some perspective. Like you see shadows that will have some perspective. And I can make it shorter or I can make it longer. I'm just trying to match what's happening with that box. Okay, now I'm going to place that man shadow underneath. I'm going to place it all the way underneath, underneath the man reflection. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a blur again. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And typically with my shadows, I add a little more blur than I do with my reflections. OK, and I'm going to take the opacity down on that layer. All right, we're almost there. It's looking good. So next, I am going to add some blur. I know the man is not moving, but in architectural renderings, especially for students, sometimes the people can take away or jurors think the people can take away from the image. I don't. I think the people are what gives an image its energy. So I'm going to add a little blur. I'm going to take the man and make sure that layer is current. So I'm going to go to main menu, filter, blur. And I'm going to choose motion blur. Now with motion blur, it has an angle. I can, I can move this so that it's 90 degrees and that blur goes up and down. Or I can blur on an angle or I can blur at zero. And I'm going to choose zero. And then there's a distance for my blur. It can be like really crazy, like off the screen, like a moving car. Or it can be something small. OK. Now I want this to be on a new layer. So I'm going to make a man blur. So don't do it on the man layer because I want to keep the man layer there. I'm going to control J and I'm going to call this man blur. And I'm going to add my motion blur. So main menu filter blur motion blur. Okay. That looks good. And I'm going to take the opacity down. All right, that looks great. Now, what you can do with these layers is, with the man layers, you can actually put these into a folder. So I can select all these. And I can say, I can click on this folder at the bottom right, create a new group. And I can call that man. So now it's all in a nice folder, neatly packed away. And I can move this around. I can use it in my next rendering that I'm doing. You can create a library of these people. Let me undo the move so I make sure he's in the right spot. All right, where was he? Let's turn on the cylinder just to check. There you go. Not that it really mattered for this. <laughs> all right, we covered it all. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment telling me why you liked it. You can click on my big head that pops up in the upper left and I'll put some links to some other videos on the upper right and the lower right. All right, I will see you next time.